I'm up here or what? Yeah. yeah. You can go yes. up there. You're up there. I farted in that chair though, so it's a little warm. I'm sorry. That's all right. You good? Classy I'm good. So far. Yeah. All right. Awesome. You can tell Alex we all heard that. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's what I got to deal with. All right. Well, we are now joined by our race winning crew chief, Greg Ives. Um, was Jeff with you also? No? Jeff Andrews? Yeah. Okay. He's somewhere over there. Okay. Well, we'll get kicked off with Greg then. Um, if you have a question for Greg, please raise your hand and let's kick things off with Bob Walker. Bob. Yeah, Greg, did you have any yeah, idea yeah. that those adjustments yeah. on that last on that pit last stop would stop work so well? Uh, yeah, um, of course I did. So <laughs> um, uh, going back to something I learned with Dale here, uh, I think we were running top five, top eight or something like that. And we had an adjustment late that it uh, worked okay, but didn't work quite exactly how he wanted. And he didn't yell at me, but he uh, advised me on some of the things that distracted in the last 50 laps. Um, and, you know, at the start of the race, we knew we had a, a 30 lap run there. So we made some adjustments uh, to try to trial that, you know. Um, and, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and lie, but I, I knew we were going in the right direction. I didn't think it was anything magical. I just thought um, it was the right direction. So put that in our memory bank and, and go from there and uh, know that we did make adjustments, um, you know, just based on his comments and, and, and what he fought on the short run, so. All right, and Bob, did you have a question for Jeff Andrews, um, general manager of Hendrick Motorsports, as he just sat down? I'm good. Thank no, he, he's not, he's not <laughs> in right now. Uh, he, he, he came in and then left. No, he's here, I see him. He's just in another oh, room. he's in another room, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well, we're going to take our next question from Jim. Uh, congrats. Congrats, Greg. Um, I was just, I was just curious uh, in the, in the course of uh, this season. Now you have yourself and uh, two of your teammates have now won fairly early in the year. How, how do you feel that will get you kicked off uh, for the playoffs later this season? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Last year, we won early, um, I think, at California, and that really set us up for, I wouldn't say trying things, but we got a little aggressive with certain things, and we lost out on stage points, and uh, we learned a lot how not to do things. Um, you know, ultimately, we gathered it all back together and had a great run in the playoffs, and I, I feel like, you know, this first how many races we had has been a struggle to get to finish. Uh, we've obviously had the speed, but just never had the finish to get it done. And, um, you know, the guy's been growing, uh, you know, through adversity. I think that's the number one thing that I can uh, take from this weekend is, you know, and last is that we grew through the adversity. Uh, it wasn't easy. Um, you know, California last year when we won, it seemed uh, it was ours to lose. And, uh, and we won it. And this one, it was ours to win. Uh, we had a fast car. Um, you know, I know the 11, 19, and the 22, uh, uh, had a fast car as well and we knew given the opportunity to line up with them it was going to be a tough tough uh, deal and it was going to take something special to make it happen and you know ultimately that's what happened uh, we made some adjustments Alex got up on the wheel and he's been you know after our, our, our dismal stop there you know he came on the radio and said that's okay we're going to just pass all, all of them again so and exactly he uh, stood true to his word. And also um, how big is this win for your team this at, at this time, considering uh, the tragedy that you guys suffered through in the off season, and also starting off as the 48 car with a new driver and, and new team. Yeah, I mean, uh, at this level, motivation is never, you know, necessarily needed any more than anywhere else. You know, where all the guys are motivated to win, uh, motivated to do their best to do their jobs. And, you know, the, the off season uh, added some uh, definitely uh, some some unneeded uh, motivation and, and the loss of Rowdy and Blakely. And, you know, it's been hard uh, every, every morning uh, we wake up, and, you know, we're reminded of the energy that he brought to the team. And, um, you know, we just try to bring part of that uh, that will to never give up. And I think I think you saw in victory lane how uh, emotional Alex was about it. Um, you know, I, I think that that every every lap he runs 
that's on his mind uh, to drive him and, and motivate him and, and to never give up as, as Rowdy and, and give a hundred percent. So, you know, um, it's, it's uh, a special win uh, for us to be able to do that. Um, you know, definitely. Yeah. We don't need the added motivation. Um, you know, we're already right there and, and trying to uh, get everything we can. And, and that's tribute to Rowdy and, and uh, um, you know, just happy we're able to get it done. Thanks, Greg. Yep. All right, we'll take our next question from Dustin Long. Go ahead, Dustin. Uh, thank you. I had one for Greg and one for Jeff. Um, Greg, um, you know, one of the competitors talked about they thought the, the adjustment you guys made was maybe a little bit of a gamble and kind of figuring they thought it was more of just pumping up the air pressure, saying, look, if he doesn't get out to a, a quick run quickly, he's going to probably fall back. Uh, for the non-technical types like myself, how much of a, I don't know if risk is the right word or a gamble or anything in, in terms of what you did in trying to get that, that, that the adjustments before that final restart. Yeah. I, I mean, our, our strong suit was the last 30 laps of, of a 50 lap run. And, um, you know, Alex said that it was tight taken off and you, you use that the multiple times that you lose spots on, 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 on restarts and, and you try to figure out what adjustment you need to make uh, to make it happen. And uh, I'd say majority of the time, these races come down to uh, restarts at the end of the race with, you know, a handful of laps to go. And this was, I don't even remember 15. And uh, you know, you, you have that adjustment in, in your mind that you're going to use. You never, until it happens, you uh, never know it's going to work. So that's probably where the guys think the gambles comes from especially when we had such a good car, but we didn't have a good car in the circumstance that we needed to make adjustments to it. Um, otherwise we're just going to, you know, struggle on the restart, probably finish third or fourth. Um, you know, the, we necessarily didn't, if we're sitting sixth, maybe, but you know, we're sitting there third, have the ability to make an adjustment, allow us to, um, you know, take advantage of, of, our, our, you know, just shift our, our strength of our car towards the front of the run versus the end of the run. Thanks. And, and for Jeff, um, obviously, uh, you've got now three of your four cars that have won races this season, but uh, certainly the nine car, the reigning series champion has not. I'm just kind of curious, as you look at things, the way that the, the nine car has, uh, has performed so far this first uh, quarter of the season. Well, yeah, certainly. I guess, you know, going back to, to, you know, what you said there about three of the four cars being in, we're really proud of that. And, and uh, congrats again to, you know, Greg and Alex and, and uh, that team, especially after, you know, having a really good car last weekend at Martinsville and being able to come back today and come back from what they, what they had happened to them there during that pit stop and uh, come back and win. But, um, you know, as far as the nine team and Alan and Chase and, uh, you know, we've got the utmost confidence in, in those two guys and that team, all really all the same players that, that were on that team last year. And, uh, you know, you just, you go through these spells where, you know, they've had good runs. I mean, look at last week, they feel like they had a really good car last week and we came a little bit short. So it's, it's not been that the performance hasn't there. I think more we're looking for a little bit of the consistency and, you know, nobody's going to work harder at it than, than Alan Gustafson and that team. So it's, uh, we, we've still got, you know, a, a lot of racing to do here and a lot of good tracks coming up for them. Obviously excited to go to Talladega next week and uh, it's been a good track for them. And then, and then uh, on to get back to some of the mile and a half stuff. We're looking forward to that as well. So thank you. All right, we'll take our next question from Lee Spencer. Go ahead, Lee. Thank you. Sorry, gentlemen, I was writing. Um, <laughs> Greg, you, you've known Alex now pretty well for, for several years. What, did, what is it about him? The guy's got such a huge heart. Um, he's such a car guy. Um, you know, what is it that you have found that makes him tick behind the wheel of the 48 or, you know, previous, your previous car? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I have known Alex, and, and the number one thing that I've, I've always continued to push Alex is to, to grow out of his shell and to grow into the leader of the team, and he does that with the race car, right? He's impressive. He drives a, to the limit that not a lot of guys can, um, and, and he's doing it. 
a great job with it. He works hard outside the race car, uh, whether it's on uh, his fitness, whether it's on its mental uh, capabilities and also on his own race team. So a lot of things that keep him busy. Uh, I think that's that continuous uh, motion in, in your life allows you to uh, uh, keep your mind growing and keep you uh, motivated on the things that matter, like winning races and, and uh, growing a team and being part of a, a brand like Ally that uh, supports you 100 percent. So that's the that's the comfort I've seen uh, with Alex over the course of his uh, career here, um, you know, just growing into himself and, and gaining that confidence of. Uh, of the, of his team, his support group. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, we have to go against the grain uh, set up wise or, or vice versa on, on certain things. And, and he has the confidence in us, um, to, to put a setup under the car that, um, maybe a teammates one with and, and put a different setup under the car that we, we necessarily can't. So, um, you know, it's a reciprocating, uh, confidence between all of us. Um, you know, my, my race engineer, uh, Tim O'Brien and my car chief, Austin Konitsky, they handle such great loads of, uh, of work, uh, to give information and the best race cars to Alex and, uh, and allow me to, uh, crew chief it. And what's it going to take to get to that next level where you're winning multiple races? I mean, it's, you know, he, he's always seems to be right there and maybe, you know, winning at a track like Richmond where, he really surprised himself today. You know, maybe that will be one more step, one more added bit of confidence that he needs to make it to the next level. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, our short track program, and I'm not, you know, going to sugarcoat it, uh, was terrible uh, for the 88, 48 and, and the team that we had, you know, running into races. And, and we got to the point where, you know, we're going to build off of what he needed, needed. And he felt, saw some consistency with that in the short tracks last year. And, you took, we took that same uh, mindset going into Martinsville, Phoenix, uh, and here at Richmond that we're going to build off setups that he's comfortable with and, and, and uh, build some consistency and feel uh, that kind of like he has in the, the intermediate 550 program. He has a feel that he likes in the car uh, that we just fine tune and we tweak. And, and you know, if he has a, a, a general uh, want or need, we, we adjust for it. And, and that's, that's ultimately what it's going to take for us to, uh, win more races is stay consistent, uh, minimize our mistakes and execute all day long. And yeah, it wasn't a clean day, uh, by any means. I don't know if that added fuel for motivation to go out there and, and uh, put it all on the line and say, Hey, you know, records are checkers or, or if it was, uh, you know, just that solid, solid, uh, end to the, to the race. So, you know, we've, we've had speed all year. And, uh, you know, haven't had the finishes, uh, whether it's leading the, uh, the Daytona 500 and getting wrecked out to, you know, running second, having a loose wheel. So, you know, that's that's on me and on the on me to, to get better. And, and we did most of that today and, and we're going to go home and uh, I guarantee you uh, work on it some more. Appreciate your time, gentlemen. Safe travels. Thank you. All right. We'll take our next one from Jordan Bianchi. Go ahead, Jordan. Um, I have two questions, and these are both for Jeff. Jeff, uh, we've seen, you know, spurts out of Hendrick Motorsports for the last few years, obviously at the end of last season with Chase winning three of the last five and then the championship. But you have more organizational-wide consistency this year, three three drivers in victory lane. You guys have been fast just about every week on just about every single track. What do you attribute that to uh, with Hendrick Motorsports where you guys have been able to raise up your game? I think we we've, we've gone to work in all areas. I mean, we, uh, you know, you're correct in, in saying, you know, last year we certainly struggled through uh, the middle part of the season, and and you know, I think in July kind of reached our our low point, and we we dug pretty deep at that point in time, and and kind of set a focus on uh, you know late summer, early fall to get ourselves in position to get our cars through rounds and playoffs, and. Um, you know, we hit on some things there, both on the vehicle side and both on the engine and powertrain side. All departments, you know, went to work pretty hard in different areas. And uh, I think you started to see that pay off for us some uh, late last season, culminated in a championship for us. But, you know, I think we felt like we were just kind of scratching the surface on some really good things uh, late last season. And then over the off season, you know, we had an opportunity to, to really continue to work on those areas and push on those areas. Uh, you know, again, 
on the vehicle side and aero and engine and all those areas, really all our departments and employees at Hendrick Motorsports really stepped up since that July timeframe last summer when, uh, you know, we took our look at ourselves and, and we owed Mr. Hendrick, we owed our sponsors and Chevrolet better than where we were. And we took a hard look at ourselves and that, that just was not acceptable. And uh, the whole company banded together, went to work and, and uh, just, just really a continuation of, of kind of what we had going on in late 2020. Uh, the second question I have is the last time Alex won a race, he was kind of in negotiations with a new contract. It wasn't too, there, too long after that. They, you guys announced that he was going to be back um, again. He's in a contract year, wins a race anticipation that he'll be back next year. And where are you guys at in, in those negotiations? Yeah, we're, we're in the middle of that, uh, you know, right now. So obviously, uh, you know, that will continue on. And, and uh, when we're ready to have something to talk about there, we'll certainly address that. But, uh, you know, just, just, you know, say right now that, that we're in the middle of that and, and we'll continue on with that, of course. So, Thank you. All right, we'll take our next question from Daniel McFadden. Go ahead, Daniel. Uh, yeah, uh, I got two questions, one, one for each. Um, J Jeff, um, you know, what, what does it mean uh, Alex gets his win on the day that Jimmy Johnson gets his, you know, big debut in IndyCar down in Alabama? Um, how weird has it been not to have Jimmy be a week to week presence with this team um, for the first time since 2002? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's strange. I, uh, I sent him a text a couple of days ago, uh, wishing him luck uh, on his new endeavor. I mean, uh, you know, when somebody is a, a pillar like that in your organization for all that he did for our organization, as a driver, as a spokesman, the way he represented our sponsors and our company, uh, you kind of miss those people that, that, you know, in our eyes are kind of role models. That's really what our company's about. And, and we all truly consider him a, a pillar of our company. So, you know, to see him off racing somewhere else and kind of watching, you know, how he was doing. I mean, you know, I won't lie. I, I clicked over to, uh, to IndyCar there a couple of times uh, during the race just to kind of give a quick peep and see where he was at and see how he was doing. I mean, uh, we care about him. We want him to have success. and But certainly not having him around and not having him in our competition meetings on Monday and our debriefs and, and you know, not being able to talk to him on, on pit road, it's it's different for sure. It's it, He was a long time with our company and uh, certainly a pillar of our company. And, uh, you know, Alex, just so proud of him. I mean, he stepped up today and, and, and got uh, behind the wheel there and, and, and brought that infamous number 48 uh, back to victory lane on his terms. So uh, I'm sure Jimmy's proud of that. And, and I'm most certain that, uh, that Greg and, and, and uh, Alex have both already gotten a text from, from Jimmy with his support. And, and Greg, what does this mean for you to, to get the 48 back in victory lane for the first time in basically four years? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's been, you know, a long history of the, that number uh behind my career right so you know it's always been a special number for me um you know but it when it comes down to numbers cars legacy doesn't matter if you're not winning so um that was the ultimate goal is to get the car uh back in victory lane and it didn't matter necessarily who was driving it um you know and and, and what number it was it, it was as a team you know to 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 do uh what we did today and uh, represent 48, represent the, you know, Ally brand, um, and to get Alex to, uh, you know, a uh, elusive uh, win here as of lately, and and Hendrick Motorsports to victory lane at Richmond has, has been, um, you know, pretty uh, satisfying. Uh, like I said, it wasn't uh, without some hiccups along the road, and, and that's great. I love that uh, a team can battle through adversity and, and dig deep and, and go out there and, and figure out and find out uh, what they're made of to, to get a win. And, um, you know, if, if we just cruise to, a, you know, lap the field and, and cruise to a, a huge victory, I probably wouldn't be as satisfied as I am right now uh, for us to have fast cars, um, you know, to battle through some adversity that we've been uh, fighting and, and to, to go out there and, and continuously be a team, uh, a team that doesn't point fingers, but, uh, uh, you know, locks arms and, and go out there and, and get a win and, not once did Alex come on the radio with any other thing other than, hey, we're going to go past some more cars. So that's uh, what I'm most proud of. And that's uh, what real teams are made of. Thank you. 
All right, and we're gonna take one final question for these two. Um, go ahead, Kelly Crandall. Thanks, Marissa. Jeff, I just wanted to follow up on what Jordan was asking you about the company. Um, specifically, what difference has it made? Do you, do you think the new partnership with Richard Childress and the engine program and, and how big of a difference, if any, that has made for this company? Well, I think it's, it's made a huge difference for both programs. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's been nothing but positives that have, that have come out of that um, on all fronts. And uh, of course, ultimately, you hope those kind of things have some quick performance um, advantages for both companies. Uh, um, it's since, you know, we're really, we started taking a look at that kind of midsummer last year, been really proud of, of both groups, uh, Jim Wall, who runs our engine program and, and Richie Gilmore, who runs the ECRE engine program. Both of those guys have, have kind of locked arms and, and, uh, we're working really good together and we're working on some things, you know, continuing on, on with some things for, uh, for this year and, um, you know, a little bit different rule set this year for us with, with some design freezes on some different parts and pieces. But uh, nonetheless, we're, we're focused on some things uh, for this year that, that we can make some changes on. And, and then, of course, uh, we, we've got to focus on, uh, you know, the next gen car in, in 2022. But we've been really, really pleased with the relationship. And, and really, it's been everything that we hoped for and I think exceeded the expectations that, that we hope for in that, just the way the two programs have, have come together and, and been able to realize some efficiencies and, and also been able to realize some, some real gains in, in horsepower as well. So we're really, really pleased with the way that's been working. Awesome. Well, Greg and Jeff, thank you so much for taking some time. We'll let you guys get back to inspection. Congratulations on the victory. <laughs> and um, we hope thank to see you, you back here. See you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you guys.